What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. So today's video is going to be covering the second RC release of Manjaro Linux 0.8.5. Uh, what's so exciting about what's going on right now with Manjaro Linux, at least in my point of view, is it reminds me of what was happening with Linux Mint, um, specifically around version, I'd say, 10. And I've mentioned this in other videos that I've had. Um, Linux Mint 10 uh, was the very first Linux distribution that was able to really get me to move over um, from Mac to Linux full-time. And it's it will always be my favorite Linux distribution. It's It really impressed me um, in a big way, and I think that Manjaro Linux is doing something very, very similar. Um, I think what they're doing with Arch Linux is they're making it accessible to people, to even new users. Um, what bothers me like, about Linux occasionally, and it's one reason why I don't ever really join forums. I've joined the Manjaro forums recently um, because I think that from what I've read, um, and I think that kind of the tenor of conversation that happens over there is not what you typically find on a lot of Linux forums, but I think that depending on the distribution you use, if you go on some of these forums, there's a lot of quote-unquote experienced users that come with a sense of arrogance, that come with a sense of entitlement. Just because somebody can't, you know, run a Linux distribution without a graphical user interface or they can't um, set up a Gen 2 system with their eyes closed or an, even an Arch system with their eyes closed um, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be using Linux. You know, I started my YouTube channel to really, you know, help introduce Linux to people because I think it's an amazing operating system and there's no better feeling than that sense of freedom that you have when you're using a, a free and open source operating system. So that's you know really why I don't join a lot of these forums but I think what Manjaro is doing is they're taking Arch Linux and they're making it accessible to people and we're gonna look at some of the some of the ways that they're doing that so if you head over to the Manjaro Linux forums and I'm gonna include um, video in the video description below links to the web pages I'm gonna be referring to you're gonna be able to see a post entitled second release candidate online now some of the things that they talk go on to talk about here is uh, the introduction of a graphical installer, uh, a Manjaro settings manager, uh, LXDM as a default display manager, the Linux kernel 3.8.5 as the uh, main kernel for the installation, and additional multimedia support applications and access to the AUR have been pre-installed. Uh, they've also reintroduced the su uh, support for proprietary drivers for AMD graphics cards out of the box. Um, they've actually set up their own repository, and we'll get into why they had to do that. So to review some of the things that were just discussed real quickly, if we open up our terminal here and we do a quick um, uname, we see that, of course, it's running uh, kernel 3.8.5-1. If you open the uh, settings manager here in XFCE and come down, uh, to the system category, you're going to notice this new entry for Manjaro Settings Manager. We'll take a look at this. Now, these are system wide settings, okay? So you've got, of course, language packs. These are available and what's actually installed. My current language, user accounts. Here you can add additional users or uh, modify current ones. And keyboard settings. Uh, I think this is a beautiful tool, looks great. Um, really like that. So that's the settings uh, manager there. One of the other things that was done was soft, uh, not software update. They did add remove software. Let's see here. Um, Pamac, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to install, uh, pronounce it or not, is the uh, default graphical package manager. They've added some things. Um, they made all the panels resizable, so you can resize panels. Um, package list is now better displayed with icons. Packages can now be sorted by groups, uh, repos, or state, installed, uninstalled, orphan, and so on. A size column has been added. It corresponds to the installed size in all cases. The real download size is now displayed. Interactive search on name is available in package list panel. 
Okay, so that right there is the graphical package manager. Now, one of the things they also mentioned here is that um, they now support the proprietary AMD Catalyst driver. Why is that important? Well, if we head over to the Arch Linux wiki, we see here that as of October uh, 2012, binary packages are being offered. All right. However, Catalyst has been dropped from the official Arch support because of dissatisfaction with the quality and speed of development. Now, when they talk about quality, they mention something down here that says, compared to the new open source driver, Catalyst performs worse in 2D graphics, but has better support for 3D rendering. Um, so Arch has dropped support for Catalyst. So if you're an AMD user, like I was previously, um, that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, you can go ahead and download the driver from the website and install it on your own. However, there is no support in the repositories now for that particular driver. So what Manjaro has done, now over here on the, on the wiki, um, I really like this, this uh, little section on the wiki. I've mentioned this before, but what's new? The five latest changes. I think that's a really great idea. As of March 24, 4th, uh, 2013, access repository for Catalyst graphics cards. If we click on this link, it goes um, on into talking about this change. Um, since the introduction of uh, Xorg Server version 1.14, unfortunately, Arch Linux no longer supports the use of AMD Catalyst graphics cards. This is because AMD seems to be focusing exclusively on Xorg Server version 1.13, which is used by Ubuntu distribution. Um, obviously, since Steam has hit the scene, they've gone ahead and said, Ubuntu 12.04 is the official quote-unquote distribution for Steam on Linux. Um, however, <laughs> what I find interesting about that is I've used various um, versions of Ubuntu 12.04, and I have had issues with all of them in my NVIDIA card. There has been errors on every single one. In fact, um, I was running elementary OS Luna, uh, and when I got my uh, NVIDIA card, I tried installing Steam, and it was giving me all sorts of issues. I, I, I was scouring the web for answers, and honestly, never actually got it resolved. So I find it interesting that they're putting their the majority of their eggs in that particular basket, and it's by far been the worst Steam experience I've had um, on any distribution. But you know, here in Manjaro, Steam has worked out of the box with both my AMD card as well as my NVIDIA card. So I think that um, the Steam camp should probably really reconsider what they're naming as their quote de facto um, distribution for Steam. But anyway, I, I suspect that has something to do with it. But they've set up these really this their own repository now for support for AMD Catalyst. So if you have an AMD card and you like Arch Linux, this is amazing news that they've gone ahead and done this. Now they, they go in and detail how to enable this uh, access to this particular repository. I did this when I had my AMD card. Really, really, really simple. Um, just go ahead, follow this step-by-step uh, -step instruction and um, go ahead and set up that repository and this will give you access to you know the new latest and greatest drivers if you're running an AMD card. So I think that's also pretty cool. Um, let's see here. One thing to note about the graphical installer, which by the way was forked from Linux Mint Debian Edition, so, and they do give a shout out to Clement, the head of the Linux Mint team. Um, you want to keep in mind that right now it only supports installation to one hard drive, not two. So if you've got two hard drives and you want to put separate partitions on, on multiple drives, um, they right here they reference to use the CLI installer uh, for this matter, and you can manually mount. Um, those particular um, partitions using the CLI installer or if you're using a, a Mac. So that's um, really important to note. I did use the graphical installer for my installation. Everything went fine. I did have some issues on the first RC with Grub getting installed, um, but that has now been fixed. Um, I mentioned previously that um, access to the AUR is uh, out of the box now um, with this installation. So if you want to do install um, software right out of the AUR, you'd simply you know open up your terminal window as per usual and start up by typing um, Yawert 
and then the name of your package and then go go on and about your merry way and uh and install the packages that way so that's really nice that they've installed that right out of the box let's see here uh, in terms of software a couple of changes were made um, for office <clears throat> libreoffice calc and writer are installed by default i went ahead and installed the rest of the libre suite <clears throat> in 0 0.8.4 gnumeric and abby word were installed by default I usually deleted those and removed those from my system and installed the LibreOffice Suite because that's what I prefer. Um, under Games, you still have Steam here installed by default. And let's see here. Under Internet, <clears throat> Firefox comes, the default web, comes as the default web browser. I usually use Chromium, so all I did was install Chromium. But that's pretty much it. Uh, that covers the main. And, of course, all the packages and libraries are all up to date. And the Manjaro team has also said that they've optimized them as well. So those are all of the main changes in 0.8.5. Um, <clears throat> I think they've done a lot of really great things here. This isn't a huge revision. It's an incremental release. But I think it's, it's brought some really nice noticeable upgrades. Um, I'm using the NVIDIA proprietary driver. I have my system set up the way that I normally do and everything is working flawlessly. Haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, the only thing I did notice was the uh, packages for handling zip files, zip and unzip, were not installed. So I simply just installed those. Um, those were installed by default in 0.8.4 but I noticed that they were missing in 0.8.5. Uh, I will post this video in the forum. Hopefully this helps anybody um, who hasn't installed 0.8.5 yet or is thinking about it. Um, and, you know, as per usual, leave your feedback in the comment section below. And uh, let me know if you've installed it, if you've run into any issues and I can help. I'll try my best. Um, but as always, you guys are awesome. Thank you for watching and subscribing and um, finding what I have to say of, of value. It's a pretty cool feeling. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you guys later.